Hey guys, Monkey's Nuts come here. Um, so yeah, I've got a new car. Um, it's obviously a Honda. Um, and yeah, I'll show you outside of it. But at the moment, I'm loving it, I am. Um, it's been a little bit of a while since I've done one of these videos, so I might be a little bit rusty. But uh, yeah. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to show you sort of like at the moment inside, obviously inside you can see it's all like high tech and that and uh, yeah, it's sort of, it's all right, it's a good little car to be honest. Um, this is the Honda Civic Type S GT, um, uh, the diesel version and uh, quite a good sort of like it's well it's good spec and everything very good spec to be fair i mean it's got you've got cruise control um it's got auto wipers auto lights i mean there you go i didn't even touch it then and it did it um got air can air con uh oh look um when you press the little button there the wind mirrors come in so you know like when you're parking you don't get clipped or anything um passenger works that one doesn't not too sure if it's just a little issue with the wiring or something like that or that kind of thing um, it's the first car that I've had with an actual fully working radio so obviously I can get sort of like the radio now so that's the that's quite a good part of it um, I'll go through the my other little niggles that I've got with the car first um, in a bit. Park down here. Oh, avoid all the holes. Well, someone's been fly tipping. Oh, someone's been in that field as well. So yep, yeah, uh, this car, it's a uh, six-speed manual, um, I've had to get used to that because I'm used to five speeds obviously, and having an extra gear is totally new to me. Um, so yeah, this is the car, it's a 2007 model, um, let's do it more because it's getting a bit nippy out now, um, so yeah. 2007 um, it looks black but it is actually bronze um, you can tell it's bronze because sort of like apart from the front bumper there's you can see little bits of silver in it the paint's not the best on the car front bumper could do with the respray because it's it's quite worn you can see here it's like that how light it is um, so that's worn a little bit. It's had, I think it's had a something's clipped it at the front at some point. Um, lights could do with a bit of a polish up. Um, back of the car's okay. I mean, obviously it's you can see it's a bit more brownie over here. Um, brownie, bronzy. Um, I like the little triangular exhausts. That's quite good. Um, but uh, no, the, the only, a couple of little niggles with it is that this rear light here, where the brake light is, is very difficult to see out of. Um, when you're reversing and parking and stuff like that, I have had a serious difficulty with parking and stuff. Um, boot's quite big, sort of plenty big enough and everything. Um, inside the car. It's sort of like it's all right, really. Um, I love the little dash bit. I love the way so, sort of it lights up. Um, I love the way that sort of like you've got this little dial. I'm not too keen on the speedo being there. I'm used to having an actual um, uh, digital speed, um, digital analog speedo. But um, no, it's uh, it's quite good inside, obviously. The thing with the car is that it's 2007, but um, it's uh, 
it's got 166 on the clock which is quite high to be fair being a diesel obviously it's managed perfectly fine um, the car has just had a remap um, pushing it to um, oh why have I opened the fuel cap oh, that's annoying because those two are right there very similar you've got the bonnet and you've got the um, fuel cap opening thing um, I don't like the fuel cap I don't like how silvery it is because it stands out really on the side of the car not too keen on that um, put under the bonnet so it looks smallish engine but you got to remember it goes back behind this top part quite far it means that it's a little bit difficult when you're doing things um, when you're servicing it and stuff it's chain driven so that's one issue I don't have to worry about timing belt the auxiliary belt looks a bit worn it looks okay though I mean it might go or something but it went on the uh, MG as well so I'm not too fussed um, so yeah it's got the type R front grill because normally it has a light there someone's put a type R grill on it uh, same colour and everything which is quite good uh, not sure what kind of difference that makes if it sort of like oh, if it increases airflow into the car I don't know if it really does anything to be honest um, yeah like I say it's had a remap um, pushing just over 200 the type R is 197 so this is tiny bit more powerful than the type r however even though it has that power i can't put it on the floor put it i can't put it down and i can't put my foot down because the clutch is on its way out basically um the clutch is just not very good uh, i read up and turns out even with the standard 140 brake that these have the clutch is bad then and it slips in the higher gears which is a bit of a shame really but like I say it's something that just happens really but um, I have a stage 2 clutch on the uh, list um, so that's gonna that's gonna be quite an expensive purchase but oh well it's, it's got to be done for the car to actually be drivable um, all the things that I've doing is uh, I've put wind deflectors on mainly because it helps these are uh, proper HECO wind deflectors um, the majority of pretty much that's the only thing that you get for these cars and um, that's the only brand that you get for these cars um yeah I've got a rear view camera um, parking camera more than anything I'm gonna be putting the little screen for it around about there so the camera because the camera at the moment my dash cam it picks up the speed um, and the radio obviously when it's on um, so just about there if I put like the screen there it means that it can kind of catch it as well so whilst I would be having front view as normal I would be having rear view from the little screen um, obviously it would help with parking and everything camera that I did buy has a front facing camera but I haven't yet discovered anywhere to mount it um, so I don't know about that just yet um, in the back of the car I'm not going to pull my front seat because these seats are very, they're pretty annoying basically what happens is when you pull the seat forward you pull it up you can move it forward that's fine but then when you move it back if you say put it back like that it gets stuck there and that's not where it was so unfortunately you have to move it to the back of it like that and then if you want it to go all the way back say then you have to do it then obviously you can see it's further back it's a bad design that it doesn't remember exactly where it went back seats good condition all right really um little cup holders in the back so people don't spill anything um it's a it's a good car really um, it's got the full service history on it when I bought it 
I had to have a little uh, train journey up to Preston to pick it up. It was a bit of a drive. Um, I got a very good bargain on it, a very good deal. Um, I think it was mainly so cheap because sort of mainly the high mileage, but it's been serviced pretty well. I mean, it came with a full MOT, no advisories on it or anything. Um, I've had a look underneath the car as well. There's no signs of um, rot or rust or anything. There's obviously bits of surface rust here and there, um, but nothing, any, nothing major really. Um, driving it mechanically, it's sound. Brakes are all fine. Tyres, well, the front ones are kind of getting a bit there. Um, you can see they've got a little bit left on them, um, but I'm going to be getting a much better front tyres because of, obviously we're getting into winter season. These front tyres aren't that good. Um, what are they there? I mean, the rears are. Doesn't even say what the rears are. Nope, it doesn't say what they are. The fronts are. Ginyo. Hmm. Cheap, naff, uh, budget ones, obviously. Um, and look, the other thing that I want to get sorted is exhaust. Now, the exhaust at the moment, the front part of it, absolutely fine. But the moment you get to the back box, because the back box, you've got a box, one pipe goes into the side, and then you've got the two that come out at the side as well. Now, it's the way that it is, it's very tight. I've spoken to an exhaust specialist, and it, it is very difficult to get it. He suggested getting an aftermarket one, one that's purposely been designed for it. But unfortunately, they don't exist. No one makes an aftermarket back box for this car, especially the diesel. Because um, typically with diesels, you don't get at back boxes, you just straight through them. I don't want to straight through it because I feel like it would be very, very loud with it being a higher, um, uh, higher CC than my MG. But saying that, my MG was all straight through, decatted and everything. You can get a decat and you can get a DPF removal pipe for these. They're about 100 quid each, no, 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 they're sort of all right-ish. Um, but whether or not it's really worth it, I don't know. Um, Decat obviously will make it sort of like a little bit louder. DPF, I don't know if that would actually make any kind of difference with it. Someone's coming now, they're probably going to look at me like, what are you doing? Um, so, yeah. Um, back box, I might just leave that. Middle box, quite a simple thing. That's just a straight bit of pipe, quite short. I could probably get that sorted. Whether or not it makes much difference, I don't know. But um, it's one of them things. But uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed the car. It's it's going well at the moment. Once clutch is sorted, I'll enjoy it a bit more. Um, I'm pretty happy just leaving it as it is, looks-wise. I'm not going to be changing anything, I'm not going to be changing the wheels, Not nothing on the body, no stickers or anything, because it's just I'm not too keen on the stickers. Like I say, I've done wind deflectors, um, front lights, they need cleaning up, polishing up, because we're a bit foggy at the moment. Um, same with the fog lights. Front of it, I might get a uh, sticker there, red sticker, get rid of that front one might make it look a bit tidy around the front um, and then on the back I don't know what I don't know whether or not to fog the back going fast that's an AMG that's a C63 AMG quite a nice car that um, yeah the backlight it's I don't like the look of it really because it's it looks very tacky and plasticky um, I might just get like a smoke spray and spray that. Um, at the moment, I only have one rear light as well. One reverse, sorry, not rear light, reversing light. Um, so I might just put another bulb in, get one of get those two done. Um, and like I say, I've looked on the body kits of the types of ours, and the only main, main difference is spoiler. You get a spoiler with it. That would make the car look a little bit different, but if, if I got a spoiler on this car, it just stand out. It wouldn't look right, really. Um, he's coming back here now. So, yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to do. Um, 
carbide. You alright? You alright, man? Making a video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just looking at your car as well. It looks quite nice. Is it C63, is it? Uh, 863. 863. 863. Oh, A63. Sorry, yeah. What are you videoing? Oh, no, just doing something for my YouTube. Oh, yeah, on your car? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's been remapped to a bit more powerful than the Type R, but it's okay. the diesel, so it's it's like good on fuel and everything still. So yeah, but yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Fab enough. Probably would take one of them over mine any day, like. But oh well. Um, so yeah, that was that was the car. Um, there we go. Apart from getting a video bombed there, but oh well. Um, so yeah, like I say, it's enjoying it. Um, you won't probably won't see any money videos of the outside of it. Um, I might do an update after Christmas, that type of thing. But other than that, nothing really else to say about this. I like it. I it's I enjoy it and everything. It's a good little car decent grip it has had a couple of electrical issues um, the engine management lights on because the intake recirculation solenoid or something has gone um, I had it been Honda yesterday and that's what they said and also the VSA light came on vehicle stability assist um, they said that the your sensor had gone but they've reset it and it's not come on again um, the VSA is quite an expensive part. They quoted me eight hundred pound to sort it out, and it's just it's 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 whether or not it's worth it. When the lights came on and everything, the VSA light, I simply just didn't have traction control or stability assist. I've driven all my cars before, haven't had it, so I mean it made no difference to me. I can I can drive a car without it all, but obviously in the rain and in the snow it does help. Um, even though they say you'd never have you never have um, traction control on in the snow anyway, because you need to be able to feel what the car's doing and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean a couple of little niggles and stuff, but you'll get that with a car that old. But I'm very happy with it. It's much more mature car than the MG. Um, so yeah, I mean yeah, that's pretty much it really. Um, so yeah, this has been Monkeys Nuts Come, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.